Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Mega Asia webinar. I'm Grace from Mega Hong Kong. Today, our topic is paradigm shift in high voltage circuit breaker testing. It is a live webinar presented by News, uh, who is our product owner of circuit breaker testing equipment from Mega Sweden. Please note that you are automatically muted to prevent any background noises. If you have any questions during the webinar, you may type in the question box, which you can see on the left of your screen. We will answer your questions in the Q&A session. At the end of the webinar, please help us fill the survey, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. We will be sending the presentation materials to those committed the survey. And attendees will be able to download an attendance certificate after you have finished the webinar and committed the survey. And the recording of this webinar will be sent to you in two days' time after the webinar. And also with us today, we have Michael Evangelista, who is the Omega TS3 group leader based off as the moderator. So without further delay, let's start now. Thank you for joining us today. News, I will pass the time to you now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. Uh, so my name is Niels Verklen, and I'm uh, based in Stockholm, Sweden, at the Megger factory there. Uh, I have been in this business from uh, 1984, so that will be uh, it's 38 years now. Started with Programma and then joined Megger at, in 2007. And I've been working with circuit break uh, related issues or, or yeah, in, in that area. Uh, actually, all my job, uh, all the time in my, in my job career in different positions. I've been also in, in the uh, engineering department. I have filed uh, two patents as a co-inventor co also for in circuit breaker related testing uh, things. So, um, so welcome and good afternoon again. And uh, this uh, presentation is called Paradigm Shift in High Voltage Circuit Breaker Testing. And we will present then the solution we think we have for this paradigm shift. That is the Eagle, the new Eagle 200 circuit breaker analyzer, which actually is not very new right now. We have had it for one year on the market. So <clears throat> yes, we jump right into the presentation. And first, something about the circuit breaker itself. Um, as you all know, it's a very important component in the power network to protect uh, other assets in the grid. And it has a uh, dual purpose, or, or I will, would say three purposes or three duties. Uh, that is number one, under normal conditions, conduct current at the minimal loss. And, and for that, of course, you need a very low contact resistance uh, then second is uh, during fault condition, break the fault current. Uh, and this is not an easy task for a circuit breaker. The arc can be reached temperatures up to 20,000 degrees Celsius and need to be cooled down by blowing the compressed SF6 gas on the arc. <clears throat> and that's a lot of energy is needed for that. Uh, which comes from the operating mechanism then, and actually also in some designs, it, it, it also takes the energy from the arc to, to, to compress the SF6 gas. And number three is the, um, uh, to, to, to isolate the circuit from, the, uh, isolate the, the load that, where you had the fault from the, from the source. So that actually three duties. Um, and uh, there is a lot of mechanical stress in the circuit breaker also. Uh, the, you, it, it, it's a very, it, it needs to have a, a quick acceleration of the contact, uh, of the mass of the contact to, to reach the right speed in right moment, uh, and then dampen out uh, the excess energy at the end of the contact travel. Uh, and, and all this is, is normally done in like 40 or 50 milliseconds. So in very short time, you have to do all these duties and, 
and at the end the, the circuit breaker should work as a perfect isolator so uh, that's a a, a, a very uh, fine <clears throat> um, mechanism and uh, on top of that uh, it's also exposed to very harsh conditions uh, env environmental co conditions like um, ultraviolet radiation you have uh, dust and humidity and also yeah all this stuff for for the at least for the outdoor breakers um, that also puts a lot of yeah, demands on the circuit breaker uh, so why test the circuit breaker yeah we all know it's a critical component then uh, and it has a very long service life uh, it can be uh, like 50 years or so in service or even more and normally it has few operations uh, because yeah and, and uh, circuit breakers are actually designed to make many operations uh, according to the IEC standard uh, IEC 62271 there is a mechanical endurance test and it has two classes uh, which are then 2,000 operations uh, and the other one is 10,000 operations and these are, are mechanical operations meaning without load and so just operating so it's designed for for lots of operations but uh, in real life the, the, the few operations might be worse uh, in the fault perspective because then the brake gets a little exercise at the same time as, as it's exposed to to dust and, and corrosion and so so it can yeah create uh, problems with corrosions and dried grease that makes everything going slower in the mechanism or even uh, stop it to operate uh, so uh, and there has been a number of surveys uh, made by Sigri um, about the re reliability of circuit breakers uh, and um, through the years uh, the re reliability has increased um, um, through the years uh, but still uh, in the one of the latest investigations there were 0 0.3 major faults in 100 circuit breaker years and in practice that means uh, if you have a population of 333 circuit breakers just an example then um, there uh, will be one major fault per year statistically um, in that population <clears throat> and for for GIS and dead tank breakers it's uh, the rate the fault rate is about half about 0 0.14 major faults uh, per hundred circuit breaker years and for live tank breakers it's uh, a, almost 0 0.5 major faults so it's a bigger than this average of no, 0 0.3 major faults. so uh, for natural reasons the, the outdoor breakers the live tank bre breakers are th th those one with most faults so then we agree that we all need to continue to testing circuit breakers and if we look into this diagram uh, a little bit further you can see that uh, the, uh, the the blue uh, uh, texts here represents uh, faults that are in the operating mechanism related to operating mechanism so we see that does not close on op on command that is 28 percent locked open or closed position 25 percent does not open on, on command 16.4 percent and all this together is almost up to 70 percent which is uh, where, where the where the fault is located in the operating mechanism and and that's actually exactly what we do with with our equipment we we test uh, mechanical tests and, and 
the operating mechanism and so so yeah we we cover uh testing of of of, of all these issues uh now uh, something about uh, this uh what we call the paradigm shift uh, in circuit breaker high voltage circuit breaker testing so there there are some trends in the power industry in some regions uh there there is a deregulation deregulation of the market uh and and contractors that are working with service uh are hired and uh, also public tenders where the 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 contractors has, has to to bid and the lowest that that the, the lowest bid win the service contract um, and and all this puts a lot of pressure to reduce uh, time and cost for for testing a circuit breaker or maintenance in general and uh, also uh, even in state owned power companies uh, the, the, the demands for efficiency has increased uh, as a result of growing requirements for transparency uh, another driver for more efficient testing is the increasing demand of reliable 24 7 power delivery and and all these uh, drivers uh, has uh, driven the demands of that to do more basic but efficient test efficient test we 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 should test more uh, but uh, with, with the most uh, essential test the the most important tests uh, and and the one that are easy to do the low hanging hanging fruit so so to say which then is like standard timing and and contact resistance measurement uh, and it's also a big demand for high reliability of the measurements you 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 don't want to if you have if you have very little time to to do a work you don't need want to stand in the in the substation and with a question questionable result where you see is this right or wrong or if you get uh, non-consistent or results uh, uh, non-repeatable results uh, and which one should i trust and so on so so this is a very important point high reliability of measurements and also the durabil durability of the test equipment uh the same here you won't, don't want to travel uh, some hours out to a substation and just find that your equipment is not running um so yeah very important point and here i can say that during this year we had uh, the eagle 200 on the market we had only one warranty case so that that's yeah a very good sign that we have reliable and durable durable product and um yeah next point a uh, quick and understandable setup and hookup procedure uh, that 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 is very important uh, thing it should be very straightforward uh it can be that you use the equipment not every day but when you come back uh, after some time you should not uh, you should directly know how to operate the, the equipment it should be very in intuitive um, the using interface and so and uh, last but not least uh, the reporting uh, normally the contractors need to send the report to to the uh, to the client and and then you don't want to sit for hours and make a report it should be very easy straightforward to, to do the reporting uh, so so uh, with that said uh, we, we see that the trend is that uh, yeah 
you do more standard testings, uh, but yet the advanced tests are also needed. Uh, and but they can be uh, directed to the most critical circuit breakers in the network. So that is more like the, uh, what you call reliability centered maintenance. So you, you, you point out the critical components and, and, may, and um, have more attendance to, to them, pay more attention to, to them in tests. So, uh, so, so we have uh, listened listened to these requirements when developing um, the Eagle Two Hundred. So we have this product done, and it's lower priced uh, compared to our uh, the, the other products in the in the range, the TM series, TM seventeen hundred and uh, eighteen hundred but it has the same measurement performance uh, and we have inherited technical solutions from the tm series uh, for instance the active interference suppression which is a patent uh, uh, that um, like filters out uh, the the influence of capacitive coupled currents through the test object and it's especially when you have pre-insertion resistor contacts when, when it's it's important, uh, but also uh, to, to suppress uh, disturbances in, in other circuit breakers. <clears throat> Sorry. And, um, and during the, the research uh, and, and development, we have used reference users uh, for input and feedback on on the program, we, we made wireframes of the software and so, and this resulted in a super user-friendly user interface and straightforward reporting and uh, also rugged design with built-in transport case and waterproof. Uh, here we can see uh, the configurations of, of, of Eagle 200. There is three uh, variables. That's uh, the number of breaks cap capability. Uh, and the second one is one or three analog channels. And the third one is with and without printer. So you can have printer on all or you can, uh, yeah, and, and, and not printer without with or without printer on all models. Uh, and one or three analog channels on all models. Uh, and regarding the, the number of breaks capability, uh, there is one model with, with uh, one break per phase. And uh, this is with two breaks per phase uh, uh, and with four breaks per phase. So you have a printer here without printer and so. And in all models, there are three control channels, one for controlling the, the closed circuit, the closing coil, one for the open coil, and a third output for the second open coil, the backup system. And there are always also three digital uh, channels for motion measurement and three auxiliary contact timing channels. And this unit measures the coil current internally. So it's always measuring, as well as the control voltage, which, which actually is stated in the standard also, that you should always uh, monitor and record the, the control voltage during the measurement to have a reference for the timing measurement. Uh, next screen here, I will uh, uh, explain all the, the, the parts on the panel. We have a printer here, four inch thermal printer, 
we have a parking space for for the leads to the coils to disconnect the circuits while, while you're doing uh, work on the circuit breaker to avoid uh, that you have unintentional operations on the circuit breaker or that some yeah uh, you have uh, the, the control unit here for close open and the second open you have three uh, auxiliary contact channels you can have configure them uh, as a contacts b contacts and and wiping contacts which is uh, the temporary closed contact um, you have three digital inputs for uh, travel motion transducers uh, here you have three uh, one or three uh, bnc inputs they are dedicated for current clamps uh, when you measure motor current or oil current or something else you can just plug them in here uh, and this channel here is a multi-purpose analog channel where you can um, you can use it for resistive transducer for travel motion and actually these these two uh, connectors they have they share the same channel behind so there is a, a switch inside here so you can hook up something like a current clamp to to your motor uh, from from the beginning and then you can have also your travel transducer here and then the program will will choose which input here to use when you do the measurement because you don't do motion and at the same time as the motor current for instance so that, that's why you can have the same input um, and uh, the timing channels uh, these ones that actually has one channel per connector uh, it's a, it's a more advanced channel that can do uh, also drm and vds timing and also uh, can you can also put a current clamp there so so it has actually four purposes a normal timing with uh, also resistor contact timing and, and resistor contact value. Uh, the VDS is a, a voltage detecting system that you find in the medium voltage substations. Uh, there is a, an outlet uh, on the on the front panel of the cubicle uh, with with normally four or six uh, banana, where you can then uh, connect. Uh, to the circuit breaker and this interface is has an uh, capacity corporate uh, cap capacity co connection to the primary part of the of, of, of the circuit breaker inside so usually this is used for where you have sealed uh, substations JS medium voltage so that that's a, a, a rather new way to measure timing on those breakers where, where you cannot uh, actually access them in another way there is no access points other than than this outlet uh, okay and then you have the timing the the regular timing channels uh, that you can have uh, two channels on each connector which means maximum four breaks per phase here and and these um, channels are a little bit less advanced they are dedicated only for uh, timing of main and resistor contacts and the res resistor pre-insertion resistor value also so that's for the, the bigger breakers um, what do we have more yeah we have here interfaces to external equipment uh in, in this case we have uh, the dual ground module where you can uh, measure with uh, timing with two 
two sides grounded uh, some communication interfaces and uh, LCD uh, color touch screen and and here we have the operate measure rotor switch which you have seen on, on all our products it's also safety uh, thought behind that it should not be too easy to just uh, yeah push a button or so uh, you you need to uh, intentionally or deliberate De deliberately uh, turn this button to to activate an operation. And uh, also, I, I forgot to say, we have a color coded layout. So we have the red face, the yellow face, and the blue face. And the ca the cables also have the same. They have uh, it comes with the uh, colored colored velcro straps that you can attach on the cables uh, in order to, yeah, so, so it's easy to, to simplify the, the connections and and where the cables go and so. Um, yes, now on to the user interface. Uh, and this is the quick test menu, as we call it. This screen is the screen you see every time you start up the Eagle 200, you, you will come here and you will come to the same session you were when you turned off the unit last time. So if, if you start a test and you, you make it halfway and you find out I need to go to lunch, okay, you can turn off the unit and when you start it up again, you will come back to the same test to the, sun, uh, to the same point. And all settings uh, is done on this one single screen. And the options you have in different places depend on the, 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 the selections you have done in previous buttons. Um, so let's say now you have timing here, then you can choose single and dual ground. But if you have chosen the motor current, then and there will be some other uh, choice here on the mode selector. Mm. Anyway, it's built up in in very logical way. So you have uh, in the first row, you define the test object. So <clears throat> number of phases, uh, if you have one or three operating mechanisms, number of breaks per phase, and uh, uh, if you have pre-insertion resistor or not, so that, that's <clears throat> the test object. And in the second row, it's more, more what to test. You have some uh, different predefined tests here. Timing is the most common, of course. Um, and um, on, on the third line here, or the third, third section, you can choose some add-ons to your measurement. In this case, you can add motion measurement to your timing measurement, uh, auxiliary contact measurements. Coil current will always be on, uh, but you can choose different ways to, to test the coil current. You can also choose to do phase-by-phase -phase measurement or just single breaks. And in this uh, button, you select the operating sequence uh, and, and here you can do some settings of pulse length and delays and so. And, and there is also another flow uh, of the user interface. So when you start, as I said, you come to this test page so that there are tabs in, on the left side here. So that the test page, uh, if you want, you can go to the metadata, metadata uh, page and fill out the identity of the circuit breaker if you want. If you, if you don't want, it will be automatically filled out with the date and time. So that's not mandatory, but here it's mandatory, mandatory to do uh, the settings. However, uh, as, as we said, it, it will remember the previous settings. So if you in, are in the substation and you measure like uh, 10 identical circuit breakers, 
you will just keep the same setting and, and go on. Uh, just start a new circuit breaker and make tests on that one. And it will keep the, the settings. Okay, uh, the next tab is connections. Uh, I will come to that in the next slide, uh, how it looks. And, and then you have the results where you see yeah, results in, in different ways. And finally, the report, when you can do the report. So there's a natural flow. Um, OK, next slide. We can see the connections page. See here, it's that this tab. And uh, here, all the channels that are to be used are uh, marked with, with red frames. Uh, you see here is a frame, here is a frame. Um, and when I push on the screen, on this frame, I will get uh, the connection diagram uh, to how to connect uh, the instrument to the circuit breaker. And here you see the connection diagram for the control unit. Close coil, trip coil 1, trip coil 2, and so on. Uh, if you use a current clamp, you will get also connection diagram for that. And a, a current clamp, clamp, you can fill out the ratio, uh, or you can also pick uh, if you have a predefined ratio or like a model of the current clamp and range, you can pick it from, from a list, predefined list. You can also see the the instant value here, uh, the, the current going uh, for the moment in, in the clamp. Uh, this connection diagram is for uh, the timing channels. So in this case, a breaker with one break per phase. So just how to connect. And we have also position indicator. You saw it actually. So, position indicators uh, that that follow the standard. You have the open or de-energized circuit breaker, the green one here, and you have the closed breaker or energized. And and then this symbol is something we came up with. It it shows that the instrument cannot determine if the breaker is open or closed because the results from the channels uh, are contradictive or inconsistent. So this means actually that you should uh, check your connections because something is wrong. So, and, and when you see this uh, symbol, it will also show the individual states for all channels you use in the measurement. So you see here you have, the, you see that the A contact is closed, the B contact is open, and two of the main contacts are closed. The third one though is open. So this is the one that that uh, is not correct. Uh, so you, you have to check the wiring probably Probably it's some loose connection or yeah, oxide on, on your circuit breaker. So you need to, to fix that. So that's a very good tool to, before you start, you can see that everything is okay. Um, yes. Okay, and then once you have done your connections, then you just make a measurement. You turn the, the rotary switch, make a connection. And then uh, here it will automatically create this uh, menu item, timing close and uh, recording number one here. And you see the result. In this case, it was a motion measurement and uh, timing also, and the cold current there. Uh, so 
actually the test menu is built up while as you, as you test. So if you would choose here, uh, close open operation on the sequence button, it will just create a new item for close open timing and, and, and so on. Um, so you, you, wh when you're done with the settings, you need, don't need to go back to this page. You just continue from this result screen, uh, more like an oscilloscope. You just do measurements uh, in a row uh, until you're done. And if you want to repeat uh, a close operation, for, for instance, you can just tap uh, the tab you had uh, or the, the item you had already created. So then you will get uh, here uh, under the tab uh, or the item, you will have the recording number, uh, the, the second recording. So, so that, that's the way how you operate. Uh, now, yeah, we were in the graph view. Now we, we went over to the parameters view or parameters tab. So you can see here, it's a table format, a condensed format where we have placed um, the results in three columns, one for each phase, uh, which makes uh, the table much shorter. So the, the, the parameters that has individual for each phase are shown like this. The parameters that are common for the whole circuit breaker, for instance, the, the close time of the, of the whole circuit breaker, then it's presented in the, in the middle column like this. Uh, Eagle 200 can, can support all types of circuit breakers from high voltage live tank, dead tank, GIS and medium voltage breakers. Uh, and we have cable kits that are adapted to different circuit breaker types. Uh, we have a high voltage live tank uh, cable kit, which actually does two breaks uh, with the same cable uh, and, and the dead tank cable uh, for uh, high voltage. This one uh, has one channel in, in one test lead. And the medium voltage uh, cable is uh, is a shorter cable. It is, uh, I think, is three meters, and it has uh, the th all three the three channels in the same sleeve, uh, so it's easier to to handle and and wrap up and so. So, uh, something of the functions that we we have in. In Eagle 200, uh, yeah, I mentioned timing of main and, and pre-insertion resistor contacts, coil current analysis or close open one and open two coils, station voltage always automatically measured, motion measurement. Uh, we can do with both resistor transducers and and uh, incremental transducers, rotary and linear. And we have also yeah, different methods, relative measurements, absolute measurements, and so on. We can do static contact resistance. Uh, in, in this version that we have, the, the software we have really released so far, there is a, a form where you manually fill out um, the resistance for, for all the contacts. Uh, and then you will get it in the report. Uh, so actually th this method is, is um, recommended or, uh, by, by us uh, that you have a, a micrometer like a MOM2 or so, uh, an easy, uh, um, a lightweight micrometer that you can just take with you when you go up and to the break and connect your timing leads, you can do that uh, 
static resistance measurement at the same time and just fill it out in 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 this form and get it in the same report so then you don't actually you, you do the two measurements, uh, the hookup and the measurement in the same uh, same time, so to say, uh, the same moment. Um, motor current measurement, yes, we do it with, with current clamps. Uh, you can also use uh, for that, uh, if you want to trigger, uh, you can use a, a external trig for that to do motor current measurement. Uh, we also do a minimum pickup voltage test for uh, close and open one, open two. We can do this test three phase uh, by means of three current clamps. So if you have a circuit breaker with which is in the in, in dependent operated meaning you have three operating mechanisms you can still have individual minimum pickup voltage for for each phase so you can get that uh, out from in the same measurement uh, with eagle 200 <clears throat> and this is the standard package software package we have uh, then we will continuously we are continuously developing more functions. Uh, we will uh, now the next one is to have dual ground for timing. Um, first trip test also is on the on the list uh, under voltage release test timing via the VDS interface as I mentioned before, uh, and uh, also DRM measurements. Uh, that, that is to come. Uh, we hope uh, actually before summer we will be ready with, with the plus package. Okay. Um, um, it's e easy to access data in the Eagle 200. Uh, actually, everything you do, everything done on the Eagle 200 is automatically saved. So you don't need to to press a button to save your recording it's automatically saved so if you want to remove it you have to delete it so everything is accessible um, and and uh, on this internal printer you can do uh, individ you can print individual recordings uh, on on the uh, on, on the internal internal printer on the four inch thermal paper uh, and that report will actually be like uh, you cannot you cannot adjust the report it's always parameters uh, some identity fields and and the graph so that is more for like a quick quick uh, print test and so uh, for the full report of the whole test uh, we have the PDF uh, report uh, then uh, which works in the way that you have check boxes for all recordings you have done in the tests so by default it will uh, mark the last recording of the same kind like the last close you did the last open you did and so uh, but you can also change uh, to include more or exclude recordings that you want to, to report uh, and also you can uh, exclude or include some sections like if you want to in include or exclude the test settings you can do that uh, so there are yeah sections you can exclude or in include we have also worked uh, ah, okay Sorry, I forgot to mention one thing here. Uh, the, the Kaba, uh, we can uh, export Kaba uh, files uh, from the Kaba Win, and you can actually import them here and view the result. Um, 
And you can also do the opposite, export, a complete breaker file with tests and import it to Kabawin and do some analysis there. Um, it's not 100% uh, compatible, uh, but, but you can still do this. We are also working on a, a, on a program we called Eagle 200 Viewer, uh, and this will be released very soon, I would say, within a month or so, where you can uh, import recordings from Eagle 200 and do some analysis and also do reporting uh, from, from a PC software. Yes. Okay, so we have also uh, done some work on accessories. We have introduced uh, a, a backpack or a soft soft backpack where we have all the cables needed for, for a test. We can fit in this one. Uh, so it's convenient. You can have your backpack and you can have your Eagle 200 in one hand and walk into the substation. Um, we have also yeah, color-coded Velcro straps I mentioned before. Uh, and and, and uh, the test leads are has a adjustable part here. You can adjust the, the span because one uh, end of the sleeve is loose. So then you can yeah, adjust the, how long uh, you can reach between your uh, access points or your connection points. And uh, we have also strain reliefs on the on the clamps. You can don't cannot see it on this picture, but there are strain reliefs to that you can yeah hook up hook, hook your lead into uh, this the uh, the clamp. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I mentioned the software before, actually, so uh, there is perhaps not, not so much more to say. This is the standard package. And and we, as I said, we will also release the plus package. And you can also buy single, single features add-on if you only want to have, let's say, the dual ground timing. You can also buy that. Uh, program add-on. Uh, yeah. So, with that said, I, I'm ready. I'm finished with the presentation, and and I open for questions. All right, now it comes to the Q&A session. If you have any questions, you may type into the question box, which is on the left of your screen. And for those of you who are leaving, please remember to have us in the survey, which you can see on the right-hand side. And we'll be sending the presentation materials to those who the survey. And also before you close webinar, don't forget to download the attendance certificate, which is at the bottom control panel, the icon on the right-hand side. So let's see. Um, here, um, we got a few questions here. Nils, are you ready to answer the questions? I'll read them uh, out. I, I, I hope so. <laughs> All right, okay, good. Uh, the first one is kind of a comment from Brian saying that the three phase colors have ch now changed from RVB in US and Europe. RYB. Yeah, yeah. Red, red you yellow, see blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a comment from Brian from company SMLT. The, the yes, I, I, I know that uh, the colors are not the same in all regions. For, for, for example, in Germany, it's also different. It, it's, uh, uh, what is it? Yellow, green, and, and like magenta or violet they have on the face colors. But I think the important thing here is not actually the colors uh, per se, but that there are different colors that you can follow the, 
all the way from from your connector through the cables and up to the circuit breaker uh, so that that's the point i mean we we, we could not have a screen a color screen for for all for each connector so to say so we had to choose something okay yes yes all right and the next question is are there any calibration requirements for the test set um, yeah not the requirement but the recommendation i would say so uh the recommendation is always <clears throat> for actually all instruments we have once a year uh, that you, you calibrate it. And uh, I can also say that there will be possibilities for service centers and, and perhaps also users that that want to invest in this that we we have we also in in a few weeks <laughs> we will re, uh, release calibration box and um, a pc program um, together with that so we, in which you can use for calibrate eagle 200 so that uh, there there is a way also to do that uh, other than sending it into service centers. Okay, thank you, News. And the next question is, what is the weight of the test set and the test need kit? Okay, uh, the test set... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think it it is like 13 kilograms. Uh, it depends a little bit of the of the model, if you have printer or not or so. Uh, the lead kit, I, I actually don't know uh, for the moment. And it, it, of course, that also depends on on the configuration you have. For instance, if you have the one for four brakes per phase, these breakers are normally very big. Uh, they're not only many brakes but they are also high up uh, in the air so you need extensions from each one of these ones so there are a lot of extension cables done too so then it, it's a little bit more weight of course but i cannot say any figures i, I don't have it in my head All right, um, let's see if any further questions. Okay, I think uh, there's one more question here. Um, as a service contractor, uh, I would like to have the company logo in the test report header. Is it possible to customize the PDF report in such a way? Okay, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, for the moment, it, it's not <clears throat> possible, but but we have uh, it on on our to do the to do list to implement this. Uh, so it will come, yeah, in in some of the updates. Uh, so this will be a, uh, like on the standard package. Uh, so it it will just be a software update, and and you can have this feature. So I can. Pro promise the date, but, but we have it on, on our to-do list. Okay. All right. And the next one is, can you perform DRM in three phases simultaneously with the EGEL 200? Um, <clears throat> the answer is yes, uh, but it's provided that uh, the number of breaks per phase is just one. So on on this unit we have, uh, we, which is uh, designed for medium voltage up to sub transmission, meaning one break per phase basically. That model, if you remember, it had a more advanced channel uh, for timing that 
can also do DRM. Uh, so for, for, for breakers with one break per phase, you can do three phase DRM uh, at the same time, yes. Uh, but uh, if you have the other model of, of for more breaks per phase, like two or four breaks, uh, these channels has less, uh, they are less advanced. Uh, so uh, in that case, you need to use the analog channels instead for sensing the, the voltage and current. So that means also that uh, you can do one break at a time. DRM, you can still do it, but it's it's more it's more complicated, and yeah, this unit is not actually designed for that. Uh, for this kind of more advanced tests, we recommend also the TM eighteen hundred or TM seventeen hundred. Um, and I should also say that the DRM program feature is not released, that, that is included in the PLUS package, uh, which will be released then before summer this year. Yes. Okay, all right. I think there's the last question here. Uh, can the usual 200 measure coil currents in three operating mechanisms at the same time? Yes, uh, I mean, that there are two ways to solve this problem, so to say. Um, if you have a breaker with independent pole operated, uh, so me meaning three mechanisms, and want to measure the coil currents individually, uh, not, not like in parallel or so, uh, but individual coil currents, then there are two ways to do it. Uh, the, the easiest way is to do measurement phase by phase, because then you get uh, your coil current uh, measured automatically internally in the Eagle 200. Uh, and, and, and if you just analyze the coil current curve, this, it's perfectly okay to, to do that phase by phase. Um, but if you want to do it at the same time, it's also possible. And then you need three current clamps. You put uh, current clamps on, on each, each operating mechanism uh, for, for the coil currents, and then you can do three phase uh, coil current measurement. Yes, in one, one measurement. Okay, all right. I guess we don't have any further questions. If there's any more questions, you may email us to megahongkong and mega.com. And you can also visit our website, mega.com slash webinars for future sure. webinars. Uh, thank you again for attending. And also as a reminder, we are having another webinar next Thursday at 10 a.m. Hong Kong time. At the topic is transformer testing best practices short circuit imprisons test so if you're available please uh, go to the website and sign up for the webinar so thank you again for attending thank you news thank you also michael bernardo and nicholas and we hope to see you again next thursday thank you all bye bye Thanks, thank you so much for listening bye bye thank you Neil. Bye -bye. thank you Grace. thank you bye, -bye.